for you. Hi, how you doing? Good, thanks so much for doing this. Of course, yeah, sure. everyone is super excited, already thinking about Bill's season. What exactly do people need to know going into, especially August when uh, preseason starts? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, it's right around the corner, right? So we're getting closer to training camp and the regular season, preseason next. Um, I guess the best thing uh, and, the, and the most important thing we want fans to know is uh, have a plan. Um, carpool would be great, whether you have a, a parking permit or you don't have a permit, um, you know, have a plan in place before you get to the stadium, uh, plan your arrival, plan your parking locations. And, uh, and, and we're certainly stressing carpooling. You know, we, we definitely uh, are in the middle of our, our great new stadium getting built, um, but that has, uh, uh, you know, obviously um, given us some challenges uh, with the parking situation. So we experienced a little bit of it last year and uh, this year we'll, we'll experience a little bit more. How is progress going in terms of construction? What can you tell us at this point, um, specifically when it comes to parking lots and those sort of things? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not the uh, construction guy necessarily, but yeah, as far as the parking situation goes um, and the planning for the new stadium, we've had, you know, multiple meetings, um, a lot of different uh, folks involved from the county, the state. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, our premium parking team, the sheriff, uh, Department of Transportation, uh, everybody's looking at this. And uh, I think the future of the new stadium is in great hands when it comes to uh, parking and traffic. Um, you know, no matter what, you're going to have traffic when there's 70,000, 60,000 fans at a game. Um, but I think the plan for parking for people's arrival and for the lots themselves is going to really be a lot different than what we've seen today. So fans will have a, a reserved parking permit that'll be for their parking lot. And they'll have uh, basically one entry for each pass. So you're not sharing uh, entries with different pass holders, which sometimes causes a delay on game days uh, now. Our fans experience that now. So uh, a lot of positive changes with the new stadium, but uh, we're not quite there yet. <laughs> Last year, there were specific places that uh, you guys were recommending that people parked. Is that still going to be the case heading into this season? Yeah, I mean, we we recommend fans, uh, again, have a plan in place. Um, you know, the Bills lots uh, one, uh, lot seven are new this year for reserved parking for season ticket members. So that will help us uh, make it more efficient for the parking entry. It'll make it easier for season ticket holders. Um, not having to rush here to make sure they get into a, a parking lot necessarily. Um, and then if you don't have a parking permit, if you're a fan that maybe you park in one of the neighborhood lots or, or you park off site somewhere, uh, that'll give them the understanding, that, okay, they need to plan their route. They need to plan their uh, arrival, potentially have a few more uh, folks in their party uh, to carpool with. And last year, a lot of fans really did that and we noticed it. And we certainly appreciated it because we felt that really helped us a lot last year in general. Um, I think it got a little bit tougher near the end of the season when, uh, you know, we had some snow or we had some muddy lots in the neighborhoods uh, that forced people to park a little bit further away than maybe they used were, were used to in the past. Hey, Andy, thanks for doing this. Um, the Buffalo News Story said you guys are down to about 8,000 parking spots uh, coming up this year. Uh, is that number accurate? And what were you at last year? Yeah, so, I mean, the numbers are kind of changing almost every day. I mean, I drove in this morning and we're, uh, you know, we're taking away some spaces already with some of the construction with our infrastructure lines. So, I mean, yeah, at one point years ago, our stadium held, held uh, about 10,000 spaces. Um, that's going back a, a few years though. And then, uh, now we're, you know, losing a few hundred here and there, lost, a, lost a, uh, losing another probably thousand this year total when you offset everything. Um, but that's part of what we're working on and what we're trying to, you know, uh, help with is, you know, one of the things we did was, uh, we were shuttle busing the game day staff off property and using those spaces for fans. You know, we turned our youth football stadium uh, field 
and turning uh, are turning that into a parking lot for fans. So things like that are helping to offset the losses. Um, but the construction project's still going on, and and uh, it's still a challenge. And we'll just continue to work hard with everybody to 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 make it to have as many parking spaces as we can on site. But certainly encourage the fans to you know do what they hope they hope they will do is carpool. I uh, use MFTA uh, shuttle bus service from uh, from downtown locations, uh, potentially uh, ride share, et cetera. So those measures will definitely help uh, the cause. Uh, this is maybe not directly in your wheelhouse, but uh, do you know of anything that can be done to improve public transportation to the game? Well, I mean, to improve public transportation, there's got to be the demand for it, right? So. You know, that's something we're working real closely with uh, with the NFTA. We'll be in year three now working with uh, with that group. And uh, there, it's been a great partnership. They've been great to work with. We're really trying to promote that uh, that program to the fans as an option um, to take to take uh, the NFTA, take a bus from downtown locations and uh, and take it back after the game. So uh, to me, I think that's one of them. There's other really cool ideas out there we've talked to Erie County about. Um, you know, with, with potential long-term, uh, you know, elements of traveling to the game uh, from downtown. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of things we can, we can all do. We're always looking at the operation to make it better. So that's a pretty loaded question in a way, but, but also something, you know, is one of the things, uh, parking, access, transportation, it's something we talk about every single year. Uh, we get great feedback from the fans, from our staff everybody that uses transportation to and from the games about what's working, what's not working, you know, where we can improve work, where we can tweak some things. Um, and then we talk to all the other teams in the league and how they're operating and how they're handling things. So I think we have a lot of good uh, feedback, a lot of good information. Um, and we just keep, uh, you know, taking a look at those programs each year. You seem to excited about that possible Erie County thing. Any more details on that? Pardon me. Sorry. You seem excited about, about the Erie County potential partnership there. Any more details on that? Well, I, we have a great partnership with the county. You know, as you, you know, we've been partnering with them for years. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of great ideas out there. Um, we're open to everything. You know, nothing that I would share that's imminent, uh, but just different things that we always talk about. Some work in other cities or other towns, other municipalities. Some uh, may work here in the future, may not, but, you know, just different things we're looking at, nothing uh, specific to share at this point. Andy, you already mentioned the parking passes, uh, but do you mind just going into it a little bit more so that those who might be interested know how they can get a hold of those? Yeah, sure. No, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. Uh, lots one is on the south side, so that would be a reserved parking lot for season ticket members. Uh, lot seven is on the north side, so that would be a reserved parking lot for season ticket members. So that. That's a little bit new this year. We still have lots two on the south side and lot six on the north side for season ticket members as well. Uh, those passes are, those lots are basically sold out um, to clubs, suite members, sponsors, et cetera. And then in lot four, um, that will be an advanced individual game sale parking lot. So fans who buy maybe one game or two games um, or what have you, they just need to pass for one of those games. If they purchase tickets for, they can uh, purchase parking in lot four. Um, so anybody can buy lot four, but uh, that's how we're handling uh, that parking lot across the street, which is the west side of our current stadium. And does that mean you'll not be able to buy parking on game day? It must be bought in advance or am I misunderstanding that? No, that's correct. Yeah, the hope is that we sell all these lots out in advance Again, you know, helping the fans have a plan. All those lots are sold out. We're not dealing with uh, accepting credit cards or having a transaction at the entry. Just flow through the fans who have the parking and, uh, and try to help a little bit uh, with the ingress and making it a little more efficient process for fans showing up uh, for those parking lots. Andy, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm wondering about the what used to be the the tailgating area for the buses and limos. That doesn't exist for for any bus or limo with more than twelve passengers. Did I did I understand that correctly? Uh, so the tail the uh, bus and limo lot. The way it works is uh, limos of eleven passengers or less 
are able to tailgate next to their limo. And then any vehicle buses, basically limo buses, 12 passenger or more are not able to tailgate at their bus, uh, but they would be able to purchase a package in tailgate village um, and do the tailgating in the, in the tailgate village area. And that's not a change from uh, the past. So that's just continuing from the last uh, few seasons to help us with the, uh, the parking um, and the fan behavior in those lots. Gotcha. Tailgate Village, we looked at the Wayback Machine. It used to be listed on the parking site and it wasn't there anymore. So I wasn't sure if it was if it was sticking around. The other okay. question I would ask um, is when uh, it seems like the biggest change here is doing the, the pre-sale for pretty much all parking except the ADA spots. How will that help you? I, I know you said it in the news article that you want to use every inch to squeeze in as many vehicles as you possibly can. How does the doing the pre-sale thing help you achieve that? Well, a couple of things. So number one, it'll help us because we can sell those all in advance. We'll know what we're expecting on event day. Um, you know, especially with the ADA parking, you know, the, the ADA parking, you noted a little bit that that is not being sold in advance. You know, that's going to be where a fan uh, has to have the, the required uh, ADA placard from the state or county. Um, so those spaces will be managed on game day like they always have been, basically. Uh, however, if a fan does have a parking pass and they have the placard as well, they'll be able to park in one of those lots um, based on the availability and the time they show, et cetera. So, I mean, we, we're really confident working with Premium Parking, who's you know been our partner for many years, uh, and the sheriff's team. You know, we'll be able to maximize every uh, inch of our parking lot and, and utilize all these spaces um, versus, you know, waiting for fans to possibly show up and having empty spaces, not parking. You know, years ago, if, if some of you guys remember, ladies remember, um, we, we almost allowed fans to kind of park wherever they wanted. And then, and then we came out with uh, one car, one space parking as if it was, uh, you know, this new invention in parking. Um, but most stadiums and, you know, we call it Disney style parking, right? Um, they all utilize that method. And that's something we implemented a few years ago. Well, many years ago now, just to maximize the lots, use all the spaces and make it safer. So random cars weren't driving among uh, fans tailgating or fans who might already have their tailgates set up and trying to meet up with a friend who got there an hour earlier. So we, we had to do away with all that in order to maximize parking uh, back then. And that's still our plan uh, today. And we still work very closely with all the different uh, parking uh, partners, uh, like I mentioned, premium parking and the sheriff. Um, so yeah, we feel pretty good that we're, we're gonna find a space for anyone who's got that parking permit. And, uh, and then we'll be able to hopefully fans will be able to have a plan in advance, knowing that they're not gonna be able, if they don't have a parking permit, they're not gonna be able to park in the bills lots and, and you know take that roll of the dice. Oh, maybe if we get there early enough, um, they won't be able to do that. They'll have to plan for one of the neighborhood lots or maybe the NF NFTA uh, bus shuttle, uh, perhaps a designated driver program with their, with their buddies um, or even ride share. So there's other opportunities for fans um, and we're just hoping that they can help the cause out a bit and, and uh, do their best to save us and save their fellow fans some parking spaces while we're under construction. Andy, do you, do, do you, does the team have any message for private lots, uh, given how many people are going to be looking for more parking? You know, yeah, we, we, we're in touch with them uh, every now and then. Every uh, year or so, we host a meeting with our private lot owners, number one, to thank them for parking cars and uh, helping the cause out. And, you know, we know they make, make a few dollars on their own and, and uh, they do it for financial reasons as well. But uh, they have been great. The neighborhood lot owners, I have to tell you, have been fabulous. Uh, they've, they've inherited a lot of the Buffalo Bills parking lot policies we've implemented over the years. Uh, they put up their own signs regarding uh, the do's and don'ts in their own parking lots. I think they take the liability very serious. So, you know, the craziness of what we might have seen in our parking lots years ago uh, initially may have gone into some of the neighborhood lots. But now we're even seeing the neighborhood lots not 
experiencing uh, the craziness that maybe we saw years ago uh, because they care about, you know, the fans and the safety in their parking lots as well. So, uh, yeah, the big message is thank you. Thank you for parking as many cars in your uh, neighborhood lots as you can as well and being as efficient as possible. It absolutely helps the cause. And, uh, you know, certainly it'll help them make a little extra money too. But, um, but that, that's our big message is thank you uh, very much for all that they've done up to date and for what we, uh, we hope they can do to help us uh, these next two years during construction. Last one for me, I have to ask about tailgating. With, with competition for these spaces being tighter, do you see any changes to how tailgating works? No, not at all. I mean, we encourage our fans to tailgate, have a good time, just to do it responsibly. You know, we want fans to enjoy the game, get in on time. Last year, we had uh, an, a, a record high of, of over 96% of our fans, believe it or not, because we are a tailgate. We're, we're the best tailgating fan base in the country. And we still had them come in the gates before uh, one o'clock kickoff games or whatever the kickoff time was. Um, 96 of our percent of our fans were in before kickoff, which is incredible uh, when you consider. And, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But I think the effort to get fans here a little bit earlier, have a plan. Certainly they don't want to miss a play with Josh Allen uh, and our exciting team out on that field. And, um, and, and we have some new technologies at the gate entries to help get their um, get themselves and their friends and families inside the gates quicker and more efficiently. So all these measures are really coming into play to help that situation. Um, but yeah, uh, tailgating should be the same great and fun atmosphere we've always seen. Thanks, Andy.